this is SD News Nuggets, and today, you guys, I've got a really good video for you. We're coming with receipts. We're going to be connecting the dots. You guys, I've got a lot of clips to share with you guys, so it took me a while to get it out. But now we got it, and we're going to take off with it. And I'm going to share with you guys everything that I found out. I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy this and figure out what's really going on in the Dirty South. Here we go.
son is 25 years old. He has two small sons. Um, they're three and two years old. Well, we know around 12, 12, our officers received a call at this location that there was a person shot. Uh, once they got here, I mean, there was people everywhere. It, it, you can tell that it was a really close-knit community. A lot of family members out here, a lot of screaming going on. Very chaotic at the time. But we had a male that was uh, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds here at the scene. And unfortunately, he passed. And so what we're trying to determine now what made up to it. What detectives have found out is that there's been some type of long-term feud between him and another gentleman in this area. Uh, just so happened that they ran into each other. Some words were exchanged. Uh, one of the individuals presented a firearm and just started shooting the other person. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, life was lost here. And a part of me just left. I feel so empty and hurt. It's I can't even. It's something that I'm used to seeing other families go through. But to actually witness this and this being my family, my son, I'm hurt. And I really want justice to be served. Because the same guy that did this a couple of months ago shot three times in my mom's house. And we did a police report. Nothing was done. And now my son had lost his life. And don't nobody know nothing, per se. Do you have the suspect in custody? We don't have the suspect in custody. We, we are uh, speaking with a lot of witnesses, but they've been a little uncooperative at this moment. We think we know exactly who might have done it. Uh, honestly speaking, we believe uh, someone saw exactly what happened today. But normally in a situation like this, on cases like this, is when the crowd kind of uh, dispenses a little bit and everybody calmed down. Uh, we start getting people to come forward to give us some information. Boy who was shot and killed in the Collegeville neighborhood this afternoon as Tenarius Moore. I'm Hillary Simon. Police say the shooting stemmed from a family dispute. CBS 42 News reporter Tim Reed joins us live in studio with a reaction to this tragedy. Tim. Hillary, this is truly a senseless tragedy tonight. Gun violence between two family members claimed the life of a, four, a five year old child. This afternoon, we spoke with police officials and a city council member who was calling on the community to put down the guns to stop. Birmingham City Council President William Parker is calling on the community to come together tonight after police say five year old Tenarius Moore was shot and killed. The officers that arrived on scene determined that an altercation occurred between two individuals, which resulted in gunfire. During that exchange of gunfire, a four year old child was struck and is deceased. Uh, we do have a suspect in custody. Police have not said who was arrested or what the relationship was between the two family members. All we know is that they were two women who got into a dispute that led to shots being fired. It happened around 3 o'clock in the Collegeville neighborhood. shows that witnesses believed police had killed the wrong person when they shot a black man at an Alabama shopping mall on Thanksgiving. Three gunshot victims can be seen in the video, including E.J. Bradford. Hoover police have offered shifting explanations for why they mistook Bradford for an active shooter. Protesters gathered last night at the mayor's home to demand answers. Mark Strassman is outside police headquarters in Hoover, south of Birmingham. Mark, good morning. Good morning. We've been pushing for answers in this shooting, but state investigators say they won't comment on an active case, and Hoover police, despite a pledge of transparency, never got back to us. In their latest statement, they insisted that Bradford was holding his gun when they first responded at the mall. They just shot that man in cold blood. They just seen that man had a gun on him. 
and shot that man down for no reason. Witness video shows the aftermath. E.J. Bradford shot by police at the River Chase Galleria Mall. And the police seen that boy got a gun. He, got, he probably got gun license and everything. Bradford was armed. The 21-year-old had a legal concealed weapons permit. At first, police in Hoover, Alabama insisted he had wounded two people earlier at the mall. They quickly backpedaled. Bradford was not the gunman. The real gunman remains at large. At Birmingham 16th Street Baptist Church, a civil rights landmark, the Bradford family's anger and frustration was shared by several hundred supporters. It was too much for April Pipkins, the victim's mother. She collapsed in grief. Emantic Bradford Sr. is his father. I gotta bear my baby boy. And it hurts me to the core because being at home every day ain't gonna be no fun because I can't talk to my child. Bradford family attorney Ben Crump argues EJ was killed because police saw a black man holding a gun. There's some suggestion that to stop the bad guys with guns, we need to have the good guys with guns. Well, EJ Bradford was a good guy with a gun. Bradford's family is demanding the release of all videos from the shooting at the mall, including whatever was recorded by the shooting officer's body camera. Witnesses have told the family that Bradford was trying to guide bystanders to safety when he was shot. Gail, when you're around his parents, you can feel just how raw their pain is.